Hey there, I hope all of you are doing great. So in this video, we are going to learn about Redis Insight. So Redis Insight is a free GUI for Redis that is available on almost all the platforms. It lets you connect to Redis and it lets you do the things using GUI. In all the previous tutorials, mostly we connected to Redis using CLI based client and we performed a lot of configuration activity or we write or read the data using CLI command line interface. And we also interacted with Redis using Python. So those were the two methods which we discussed previously. But let's say if you are not comfortable with any of those two methods you can always go ahead and use redis insight so in order to install redis insight here are the steps which has been mentioned here uh, so again depending on where you want to install redis insight you can go to the available documentation now in this case i'm just going to install redis on docker so i'm going to copy this command and i'm going to run it here on uh, on the server and i'm going to run it in detached mode so after i run uh, i'm going to add hyphen d and that's all and we can in fact let's do one thing let's also give a name so i'm going to call it redis insight okay so this is a command which i'm going to run and now you can see it has started running. so in order to see the logs we can do docker logs hyphen hyphen follow and name of the container so name of the container is redis insight so here you can see right now there is no log to see so that's fine but we know that we can access redis insight on port 8001 and that information is available here you can see that uh, redis insight is listening on port 8001 so let me connect to this server you using uh, IP address which is 192.168.0.19 and port is 8001. Now let's go ahead and start adding uh, Redis database here. So we already have a Redis database running right here you can see. Uh, let's go to the server and uh, let's open one more console and we will just verify Redis CLI again. Here you can see we have a Redis and we have so many keys also already available here. So it means we can connect to, we already have a database so we can directly connect to uh, that Redis database. Now it is asking connect to a Redis database. So we are going to select connect to a Redis database. However, if you want uh, or you have a Redis Cloud Pro database, you can connect to that as well. If you have Redis Enterprise Cluster, you can connect to that as well. Or if you have AWS Elastic Cache database, you can connect to that as well. But in this lesson, we are going to connect to a Redis database. Now here we need to provide IP address of the server where Redis is hosted. So we know the IP address is 192.168.0.19 and Redis port is Six three seven nine, and here you can provide any logical names. I'm going to call it my Redis database. Username and password is not required in this case because we have not enabled authentication. Now click on Add Redis database, and here you can see a connection has been added. You can click here, and it will take you to this Redis Insight graphical user interface. Now here you can see it has already pulled some information about your Redis database instance. So here you can see it is telling you that we currently have sixty one total keys, and we have one connected clients. We have four connections received we have zero connection rejected and this is the hit ratio this is the uptime so you can already see on the overview section there is quite a lot of information available now here it is also uh, showing you command uh, which is executed per second number of connected clients used memory consumption network input network output and total keys right now if you see we we don't really see a lot of things going on here that is because we are not writing any information to redis but in real time uh, when a lot of clients are connected to redis Redis, in that case, you are going to see these values, you know, changing a lot okay, depending on the read and write operation which is being done. So now let's go and look up, uh, look at the, some of the other option available in Redis Insight. So on the left hand side, you can go and see browser. So you can use browser to browse to all the different databases or different keys which you have available in Redis. So here you can see these are all the keys which I have available. If I want to see any specific key, I can always go on and do, for example, here you can see I, I did girl star, it means it is only going to give me the key which is matching this pattern so which is girl names if i click here you can see uh, this is basically a set data type and it is having all the members and members are basically name of the girls uh, top thousand names of the girls okay so that is the information which you have here now if we want to see the same information we can do that uh, using redis cli as well here you can see we we were typically doing something like this okay so here you can see this is the keys which it was producing so this the, that is similar which is happening here using graphical user interface now if you are clicking here it is showing you all the names so basically that is equal to the operation which we perform here so let's do s members and then we can do girls names okay so here you can see all the girls names. so that is what is happening here as well and again if you want to add more keys you can do that as well here you can see there is an option of adding keys so for example let me add a key which is called string and i'm going to add 
a gender going to call it male click on add now we have added a more key which is a new key which is called gender okay so let me remove this filter let me refresh it and here you you will see somewhere our key new key is available here now if we go to redis uh, cli and let me clear the screen here if i do get gender you can see we have got the value here so basically you can also do these operation of adding key and value from a graphical interface as well now uh, one good thing here is while you are uh, interacting using graphical user interface but if you want to switch to a command line interface you can do that as well without even uh, needing to make a ssh connection to the server so here you can see in the cli we have a uh, interface which lets us write uh, cli commands to connect uh, to connect to redis and perform operations so for example i can do a set name vikas and here you can see we are able to write the value here if we want to get the output back we can do this as well okay so this is quite similar to the cli uh, which we use by making a ssh connection now we have some information about streams redis graph and other stuff which we have not really learned so far so we are not going to use or explore those option as of now next option which we are going to explore is called analyze so you can go to the analyze section on the left hand side and click on overview so once you click on overview it is going to basically uh, let you know that if you want to analyze you can click on analyze now so i'm going to click on analyze now and then we want to analyze on online database or whether we want to analyze on offline uh, database okay so if you want to do offline analysis then you have to provide the uh, information of rdb backup file but since we want to do it on online uh, database so we are going to select online analysis click on proceed and here you can see it is telling you that if you are doing it on online uh, database then it is going to basically uh, give some performance impact but that's fine we want to click on analyze and we are going to see that it is giving us information about memory breakup by data type so here you can see uh, most of our data is a set then we have some of our data which is uh, which is redis hash and we have uh, we have some data which is redis string as well okay so this is just giving some breakup again this is giving number of keys by data type information and here you can see memory likely to be freed over time we do not have any me memory which is going to be free because all the information or all the keys which we have written those are set to no expiry so here you can see all the information is being shown here under no expiry okay so we don't do not have anything which is going to expire in let's say uh, in next seven days if something is going to expire next seven days it is going to show those information here now we can go to key space memory here you can uh, see under the key space memory we have information about all the keys which has been stored here and then there is information about total memory total keys top keys and so on so this is going to help you a lot when you have like millions and probably billions of um, keys it is going to give you information about all the keys then in the recommendation we have recommendation uh, available here as well so here you can see it is giving us some recommendation by saying that uh, we have a lot of you know string values stored in sets so it is giving us a recommendation that rather than storing strings we should be using integer in sets in order to enhance the performance so again that is an application call which you can take but yeah here in the recommendation you are going to see all the recommendation provided by redis insights now we can click on memory analyzer so once you click on memory analyzer it is going to give you information about all the key which has been saved amount of memory which it has consumed uh, data type information size and length encoding expiry and some other useful information okay now we can click on profiler so again let's do some profiling here and here you can see so once we start profiling basically it is going to see all the commands which is which has been uh, sent by clients different clients and then once we do stop profiling it is going to give us those information that what is the kind of uh, commands which has been sent by clients how many clients are connected and so on okay so that can give you information of the type of queries which has been uh, running on uh, redis in any particular time so uh, currently we do not have any any clients connected to our redis database so we do not see much information here but you can uh, run maybe you can create a python program which can write some data to uh, consistently to redis and at that point of time you can run this profiler again now we have some info uh, we have a section which is called block uh, sorry bulk actions 
So under bulk actions, we have things like remaining, uh, renaming keys, deleting keys, set expiry, removing expiry. And then there are some export options available. For example, if we want to export all the data which is available uh, in Redis database, we can export that in one of these formats. We can export that in JSON, AOF or RDB. So uh, we, you can typically use uh, RDB option when you want to, let's say, create a new Redis uh, instance and you want to uh, restore all the data which is available in this instance on another newly created instance. So in that case, you can ex export the data as RDB and then uh, you can again provide the information here about the uh, keys which you want to export and then you can click on export. Now I'm going to show you by selecting as JSON. So I'm going to select as JSON, click on next here. That's fine. We can, uh, we want to export everything. So I just put in the find keys we have put star and then now it is exporting everything. Here you can see the exported information or exported file has been downloaded. Now if you want to open that file you can go ahead and open that file as well. It is basically containing all the data which we have in uh, Redis. So again you can see there are quite a lot, a lot of useful information here. So if you want to restore you can also restore uh, the data using RDB. So here you can see you can take backup using uh, export as RDB and then once you move that RDB file to the new machine, on the new machine you log into Redis Insight and then you restore that using uh, RDB. So that's how you can do uh, like failover or restoration as well using Redis CLI. Oh sorry, using Redis Insight. So now here in the database you can see we can click on configuration and uh, it is giving you or Redis database configuration which has been set in the uh, redis.conf file. So here also you can modify some of the things if you want. For example here you can see timeout has been set to 0. Let's say if I want to change the timeout to maybe 200 and click on save it and click on apply configuration changes. Click on apply. Now this timeout has been updated. So similarly if you want to modify some of information uh, in redis.conf file you can do that same thing from here uh, under database configuration and here again we have something called client list here you can see a uh, number of client which has been connected to this redis database so right now this is the information which we have here uh, that's all basically which is available here again under the settings there are some other uh, you know this is not really much to do with uh, redis but yeah so I have given you information about Redis Insight and how to use uh, how to use Redis Insight different options available here. Now only thing which we have not uh, gone through in this video is related to streams, Redis Graph, Redis Gears, Redis AI, Redis Time Series and Redis Search. So probably this is going to be covered in another upcoming tutorial which is going to be little advanced level or intermediate to advanced level. So since this is only for beginners I think this this much content is enough at this point of time. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any uh, question, if you have any suggestion, please feel free to write the comment and I'll be more than happy to answer those. Thank you so much for watching.